Hello, Chip GT here, and in this video, I'm going to cover everything that you need to know about SSF. What am I going to cover? Well, to be very clear, I am going to show you how to get the best audio performance possible out of this cabinet using your audio pucks. I'm going to show you the best location to put them in, how to configure your software, and in future pinball and in visual pinball, how to configure it so that you get SSF up and running very quickly. I am not going to cover how to do FX3, Terry Red does a great job of that. I'm going to re recommend his video down in the description. And if you find this video helpful, please give it a like. Please subscribe so that you know when the next video is coming out. This video is a little bit late. I'm working on recording three videos at the same time so that we get everything for DOF knocked out very quickly. Without any further ado, let's coin in and push that start button. And the rear speakers. What do you think, Sam? SSF is a moderately priced add-on, but when compared to lighting and DOF links, it is by far the easiest mod to install for your cabinet. Because of this, most people install it first, and it makes a huge difference in their cabinets. With the sound, you also get a partial sense of touch by feeling the vibrations in your cabinet. The total time to install the components is about two to four hours depending on your skill. The time to set up the software can be about 45 minutes depending on what software you need to set up in the first place. Now let's do a quick review of what I mentioned in episode three with the total cost of SSF being about $190. I failed to mention that you would also need something to tidy up your wires. I highly recommend you get an 80 pack uh, speaker wire clamps and some self-piercing hex head washer screws. These are essential because if you use the nails instead of the screws, the, as you pull out the clips over time, they're going to wear out the holes and you know with screws you can just screw them right back out and then re-thread them in nice and easy and it works out just so much easier if you want to add more wire in or loop it through or however you want to do it. But you definitely need something to tidy it up. Also you need to have a basic understanding of how to solder. If you don't have this, please see my soldering essentials video. We walk you through it very, very quickly. It's down in the description. Watch it first. It's about 15 minutes and you'll, you'll know how to solder just after watching that. I also include in the description um, an all-in-one package for soldering that includes everything that you'll need in order to do this project. Before we install anything, you really need to understand that placement is key when it comes to putting your audio pucks in. It's not just put it wherever you want. You may see some videos of online of people putting SSF in their cabinets and it looks like they're just putting them all willy-nilly wherever they think it looks cool or looks best. I can tell you they're not. They are designed, they are planned for a specific place on purpose. And the reason for that is because we are already at a disadvantage due to wood being our medium of choice that we're trying to actuate on. Um, and our cabinet is very rigid, it's not suspended, so it doesn't really get the best audio sound. So how do we go about getting the best audio sound we can out of the medium? Well, first you need to understand there's best mediums, there's mediums that just work, and then there's mediums that nope, it's not gonna work at all. We are right on the borderline of the nope, this doesn't work very well. We're, we are in the works range, but we're at the bottom end of that because all the other materials are very soft, they're very flexible, they can be, they can vibrate quick more quickly, and it's just, it's not a good overall medium to begin with. So we need to understand where the placement is going to be best. In the description, I include a link to Exciters and Tactile Transducers 101. And in here, they tell you exactly where the best placement is to get the best audio quality out of a piece of anything. What this guide recommends is that if you're suspending the medium, which is like, let's take a piece of wood and we just float it in the air, all right? And we put the audio puck on it. That is the ideal best audio that you can get. But we can't do that. We've got rigid edges on every side except for the top. And it makes it very difficult to get the placement down because it's not exactly centered in the piece of wood because we have three edges that are, that are rigid. So you want to have it off center a little bit so that you get the best audio sound. Let's talk about placement for a second. What they're talking about is if you have a very thin piece of medium here, like this piece of wood, I mean, this is rigid. 
the exciter puck needs to be somewhere in the middle, right here, or offset just a little bit for the ideal placement for nice, something nice and square. But this is not what a pinball machine looks like, and it's not suspended by its sides or suspended in the air, kind of like that. It is on a rigid cabinet with edges and sides. That means that the audio sound is only gonna be vibrating in the middle of this piece of wood. The edges will not vibrate and create your sound. So with that, here's our pinball machine, okay? With that in mind, they recommend audio pucks, like if you break this your table down and you cut it in half here and you cut it into thirds and you draw lines, that's your crosshairs for where your exciters should be or just a little bit offset from that, just a hair, okay? This is not necessarily a good thing because my pinball machine, I use a sled and a TV mount here and it slides out like this. This creates a rigid edge and the rigid edge is actually really large. Like you can tell here, it's very, very large. So for me, that doesn't work because this dampens the sound. It won't be able to vibrate the wood very well or it won't sound very good. So I've done a ton of research on my own and you guys are more than welcome to do it on your yourself. But this top edge doesn't have anything, no cross members, it doesn't connect to another piece of wood. It's basically just the front and the back and the bottom that are holding it together. And then I have this cross beam section here. You don't want to have your exciter pucks right next to a cross beam member, okay? And you also don't want them to be right up against the edge over here. It dampens the sound and you don't get very good acoustics when it comes to vibrating this piece of wood. So I have done a ton of research on my own and I have found that about six inches in front of leading edge and about six inches below the TV on the front edge is a perfect place. Why? Well, you get a nice radiating sound all around this whole front third of the cabinet. Your hands will be right here so you can kind of feel it a little bit and six inches below the TV is about where the real components would be in a real cabinet. All right. Now on the back side, because I have the sled and my sled slides out when I, when I want to do maintenance on it, I want to keep that audio puck so that it's out of the way of the sled so it doesn't get damaged. And I want to keep it in a place that's in line with the TV when it's closed. And a good, pl good placement is back here. You get all these rich, deep sounds right here. And this is why I ended up putting a subwoofer down here in the middle, because that covers that range there. And then on the front, near my crossbar, about in the middle, so kind of out a little bit like this, I just put in my center channel, all right? So that center channel, coupled with the two front channels and the two back channels, gives you full range of the entire cabinet and then your subwoofer down here in the base in the middle that gives you the reach deep base that you need and that whole everything can vibrate and you get good deep sounds you can see here my audio pucks that i have for the front channels this is the front surround this front left surround and i'll come around here and there's my front right surround the subwoofers down there, and then all the way in the back, which I doubt you're gonna be able to see. And there is the rear right surround, and the left back surround. And when this is closed, it's in line with my TV. It's like the sled is right below. Like this, this is my TV sled here. So TV sled is here. Okay, so I got an extra audio puck here from a friend. Uh, it's not very cleaned up here, but we'll still be able to use that. Um, most audio pucks come with a little bit of extra tape on, like there's a little film here, and if you pull that up, it makes it sticky. I don't recommend doing that because it acts as a, a buffer between what you're trying to vibrate, which is this piece of wood, and the, uh, the audio puck. So 
I went ahead and I pre-drilled a couple of holes here where I'm going to install my audio puck. So that'll go right there. Get this in there. Started a little bit, and we'll get the opposite corner started a little bit. And then um, you want to screw this down pretty tight. Um, but you don't want it to go through your wood. These, these screws are half inch screws and they will not go all the way through the wood, which is nice. You don't want it to do that. Otherwise it'll take away from some of your cabinet appeal. You don't want to put so much pressure on there that it'll crack the plastic. because It's just a piece of plastic that's holding it on here. And then I went ahead and I ran this wire. This wire goes all the way out the back. It's not hooked up to the audio amp or anything, but um, I pre-tinned the wire. And pre-tinning just means taking a little bit of solder and soldering it on the ends. I, always, I already stripped these and pre-tinned them. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna measure back about you know two lengths of the puck. So there's about two lengths of the puck. And I'm gonna put a little knot in my wire. Now, a lot of people don't do this, but I do it as like a safety. And what this will do is when I have a clip, I can have a clip here to hold hold the wire. And then I'll get, let's go ahead and screw this in right here. There's a nice open hole here. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip the clip around here. I don't like the way that looks. It's really close to the exciter. So, I'm gonna have it hold it away. You wanna put this on the opposite side of the knot from the speaker. And what this does is it creates a little bit of a buffer so that if I end up pulling on the wire by accident, it won't damage the connection between the wire and the speaker. Oh, see, see how that works? It's not gonna pull on the speaker when I hook it up. Now, the fat side is your positive, the skinny side is your negative, and I always do red is positive, black is negative or brown. Now, I'm gonna grab some solder and my soldering iron. And I'm going to pre-tin the speaker a little bit. So this is getting hot, it's ready to go. There you go, you can't see the hole. Pre-tin that, that just makes soldering this all up easier because the solder is already there. So I got tin on this side, tin on the other side. And now I'm just gonna connect them. Remelt this and let that cool for a second. It gets hard. There we go. And we'll heat this side up a little bit. Let it cool. Oops, I let it go too early. And you don't want to put too much heat on these speakers because there, it is only plastic holding it on, so you don't want your tinning and everything to melt the area around the speaker. And then now I'm done with the soldering iron. So I'll take that, put it down, and plug it for safety. All right, now, see how that works? Now I'm not gonna pull on those wires when I'm going to feed this all through. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna I'm going to move, manipulate the apron back into place. So it goes. Mine is kind of a tight fit. You don't have to make yours as tight. It's just uh, I didn't want any gaps. Mine will go right there. And then you can see how I already pre-wired this back and all the way through. That's why I like using these clips with these screws, because if you use nails, it's going to create uh, extra holes and it won't hold very well. That's why I recommend these clips 
with these particular screws. I've got an extra clip here. I'm going to clip this right here on one of my mount points. And when my monitor closes or when my TV closes, it'll be a nice tight fit. But first I got to screw this piece of wood back down so it stays in place. For the subwoofer, I put mine right in the middle. This is the puck here. I had to get a three inch drill bit and I'll have a link in the description for that. But it's the same thing. Uh, you can't really see it because I've got my uh, solenoids in the way. But there's a clip down there, there's a knot in the wire. It's soldered up right there. And then I have it screwed down in four locations. This one will not have sticky tape, but uh, the key thing to get is the three inch um, drill bit that goes through. That way you get clear sound. This is right in the middle of the cabinet. It gets great sound. Okay, so there's my audio amps there. They're on the back swinging door. And these, these amps are great. They give you um, some good bass, you know, treble, bass, and then your volume. And um, the nice thing about these is when you go to hook up your wires, you have your, oops, sorry. You get your left there and your right here. So this controls the front one. This is my front audio surround. And then you have an extra channel here. This is technically for a sub or for a bass. But um, if I'm for the front, this is where I'm plugging in that front extra uh, audio puck so that I can have some extra noise there in the middle in the front. And then on this side, this is the back, and I have the left and the right, and then I have the subwoofer plugged in right there. These are the audio out cables that go down and around and all the way back to the back end of my, my computer. There's the other one. And then I have the power bricks inside and they plug in, they're right there, those, those two bricks there, and they plug into an extension cord that I have right there. Um, and that is your basic audio hardware setup. All right, so if you have 7.1 audio surround sound on the back of your computer, you're going to take your main speakers. So these are like the speakers that you're gonna use in the back box. You're gonna plug them into the green channel, which is your main audio out, all right? Then you want your front channel your front audio surround Oops. sorry to go into the blue channel this is line in but you can swap it in the settings and then you want your rear audio surround to go into the black or the rear surround if you chose to get an extra amplifier for your center channel and subwoofer that's where this goes right here I didn't choose to do that. The audio amps I have have those in as an extra channel on these, and we don't have to worry about that because they handle them for us. Now we're gonna go back to the computer. Whenever you plug a uh, audio cable into the green port, you'll be greeted immediately if you're using Realtek drivers and on your motherboard. Then you'll be greeted with a panel that looks something similar like this. You'll see that we have the front speakers plugged in. This is your uh, audio for the pinball music and for the callouts, they'll come out of this speaker. This is the side speaker, which is also the back of the pinball machine. This is the rear speaker out, which is the front of the pinball machine. All right. So just keep in mind, rear is not the rear of the cabinet. It's the front of the cabinet. Side is the back of the cabinet. And this is your audio callouts for your regular software. All right. Um, once that is done, once you make sure that you've got this line in switched to speaker out, side speaker out, uh, you're going to close that down and you want to type in sound settings and you want to make sure that you have the correct output selected for your, uh, for, your, for your speakers. So I've got many. This is the primary one for my 7.1 audio surround sound. And then you want to go to the sound control panel. And see, I've already got it marked as my default. If you don't have yours as default, go ahead and you can set it as default. Um, right there with this button. Uh, but we need to configure this for 7.1 audio surround sound. So first you'll click here, 
Most of the time it'll be stereo. You wanna select 7.1 surround and then we're gonna run a test. very piercingly loud. Um, then we'll click next and we are going to say we don't have a subwoofer even though we do we just do not we're not utilizing these channels on the 7.1 surround sound board. The subwoofer and the center channel are being handled by the audio amps that are inside the cabinet. All right so if you do want to have these channels you're need to, gonna need to get an extra amp but with the amps that we have they give us the ability to have those channels already. So we'll click next and you'll want both of those checked for full range. Click next, finish, and you're done. Now you are set up for seven point, like your audio system is now completely set up for 7.1 audio surround sound. Now we need to go into the pinball software and make sure it's configured appropriately there. Okay, here we are back in visual pinball. We're going to go to the audio settings and make sure for both of these that you have the driver for your motherboard. For me, it's the speaker Realtek R Audio on both of those. And 7.1 surround sound feedback enhanced version is good to go. You click OK and now any table that you load will work with surround sound feedback. Okay, if you are using the external audio amp you want your main speakers right here to be plugged into the green line. You want your surround speakers. These are the speakers on the back side of your cabinet. Those are their surround speakers. And then you want the back surround to be your front speakers, which is this port right here under back. All right, now we'll go back to the software. Okay, if you are using the external 7.1 audio solution, because your motherboard doesn't do it. I fully trust that you follow the instructions, you went to the website, you downloaded the software, you installed the driver, and did all, all that on your own. I'm not gonna insult your intelligence, um, just know that you need to do those things. But first, we're gonna go here to sound and make sure that we have the USB sound device, this is that device, selected. As you can see, I've got multiple things on here. I'm just gonna select the USB box, and we're gonna close. And then if you've installed the software, I'm gonna have a link for you down in the description. But if you've installed it, you're just gonna type in the word audio, and it's the ear audio center. From there, if you do not see this screen, the speaker settings, you're just gonna right click, and you're gonna to go to speaker settings on the speakers. Then you wanna select 7.1 audio surround sound. And then you want to run a little test to make sure that everything is hooked up properly. Left front, center, right front, right surround, right back surround, left back surround, left surround. Yep, that sounded all great. All right, with that, from here, you are completely set up and configured and ready to go. Now you got to configure the pinball software. Okay, here we are in Visual Pinball. You don't really need to load any table if you don't want to, but uh, you're gonna come down here to your audio settings and you wanna make sure that you have your USB device selected for both the play music and your sound effects. And then you wanna come down here and make sure you have 7.1 surround sound feedback enhanced version selected. You'll click okay, you'll load any table, and from here it'll work. For future pinball, everything is done. If you set up Visual Pinball, you're set up for future pinball. All the table files and everything that are provided by the developer include SSF in those tables. You have to do nothing more. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, it is. With that, that wraps up this video. If you have any questions, because we covered so much, if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. I do read them and I respond to everybody who leaves me a comment. Next week, there will not be a live stream. I've got a family event that I've got to attend, and so I'll try to do something special um, on that Friday, but uh, there will be no live stream next week. With that said, thanks for watching.